big man because we have we have a very special guest that's joined us for the jazz cabbage cafe today somebody who's celebrating a birthday too that would be our very very good friend mr john sinclair welcome john legendary john sinclair infamous you looking good man you must be good night <laughs> that's Rick's I, middle name you know hi you know so. yeah. <laughs> hey jamie I'm out of the woodshed. Yep. No, I was just with John not re not that long ago at the Clio Cultivation event, and he recorded right. his what is it, 828th podcast? Was that oh, correct? I was 882. 882. I dyslexic uh, the numbers. Uh, the sound was too severe there. I had to recut it at home. Uh, but 882 so, uh, podcasts, weekly um, podcasts. Yeah, uh, many of us have. Uh, 883 now, and I remembered it was four o'clock. Uh, John had the good idea of doing this stuff well before any of us thought about it. I, I was before podcasting. Yeah. Right. My I, program. Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I you know, a lot of people had the same good idea at the same time. I was right. Mad. And then, of course, it, COVID forced us. I you in a long time. I know, man. And so, then I saw her there for a minute. I saw Laith Al Saudi post on Facebook that he was going to a birthday party for you. Hey, uh, Wade. Oh, that's fantastic. Hey, man, play guitars with me. Nice. I, I always like to perform on my birthday to show that I haven't deteriorated. In the <laughs> <laughs> well, I can. Very famous time that uh, you and Laith played together was on the stage of Hash Bash one year. Uh, okay. Both he played guitar uh, backing you, and you did your spoken word poetry. It was uh, amazing. What is jazz? Yes, what is jazz? That's correct. It's a spiritual, it's called. It's a spiritual. Thank you. It was a. It was impressive. It it stuck with me to today. I do that at Ash Bash because it has a great passage about the sheriff being far away from the scene of the crime. <laughs> <laughs> now we banish the motherfucker. <laughs> 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 yes. Thanks. So, John, an amazing pathway that we've gone from where you started to where we are right yeah, now. It's great. How good does it feel? I mean, I know we're not complete. Legalization's not perfect, but how does it feel right now? Well, it feels good. You know, personally, 2008 was a turning point for me when medical. I got my card. I got my caregiver. And I've been golden ever since then. I don't pay a dime for weed. I don't worry about anything. And this is better. I, you know, I always wanted it for myself. I, I fought this law because I thought they would bust me every year. They did it three times. And I thought I was going to have to contend with this because I knew I was going to be smoking pot all my life. I was pretty committed to that. <laughs> and I just thought, man, these motherfuckers are going to bust me every year. And I better fight them now when I can. And of course, I ended up doing two and a half years in prison for that, but it wasn't life. And I never had to worry about it. I've never been busted again, thank God. <laughs> Who's that? Those are some very turbulent times. Deborah Young's on here too, John. Hi, Deborah. Deb? I see John. Hi, Deb. I wanted Hi, to John. Ask you something. I finally well? heard from, I finally got back in touch with Rodriguez. I know. I talked to his daughter well, okay, good. this okay. afternoon. And okay. I sent you a message. I don't know if you saw it or not. And I said, yeah. you sent me a voicemail, but I can't understand what you're saying. But I figured it was that because she called me. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> so, I just I figured so. It felt like that's what you were talking about. Yeah, I kind of figured that was what he meant. So it, it, it happened. Cool. Well, Rodriguez, you really like Rodriguez. Yeah, I guess I'll meet him tomorrow. I've been knowing him since 68. We were hippies together. <laughs> That's a great story. Uh, there's a documentary about that. Uh, yeah, an Oscar winning awesome. documentary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was, Oscar with that. <laughs> he, was, uh, he, he put out some really awesome music but, and, and wasn't aware of how popular it was getting in, in Africa. It and didn't make no money off of it. He was like Bob Dylan. Huh. Yeah. 
And of course, his record company never paid him. <laughs> That's what so I'm saying. Didn't he didn't make a dime. It's bullshit. Yes. Yeah. It it's a great guy. story. I hope that things are going much better now. Oh man, he gets twenty five thousand dollars a night. Uh, nah. work. Nice. All right. It'll definitely well, work. Yeah. Go to the Thank concert, you work. and everybody in the concert sings the songs along with them. Cool. That's they the way it is. the movie. It's amazing experience. Nice. He had me open for him a couple of times, and he gave me an exorbitant amount of money to do it. Well, that would be a great night. Uh, see that back to back. Fun. Yep. And the ultimate compliment was the first time I had my music with me. And then the next time he said, I want you to do it by yourself because I love your poetry. Oh. You, know, you just do it by yourself so I can hear the poems straight up. Wow. wow. Nobody no music to distract. <laughs> to <go> one too. <laughs> so John, I've, I've heard this story a couple of times and it always gives me a little bit of pleasure when you tell it, but tell me how your case helped to bring down Richard Nixon. Tell our watchers. <laughs> oh, man, that's a hell of a story. I know. That's why I love it when you tell it. It's the greatest. I'm going to get it together at once. I'm going to mute myself. Well, in maybe it was September 1968, somewhere in there. I forget when it was. Somebody blew up an Ann Arbor CIA recruiting office on this campus of the university, just off the campus. Well, the fact that they had this recruiting office was highly illegal. The CIA was not supposed to have any dealings inside the United States at all. So these guys, who I happen to know, wanted to call attention to the fact that the CIA was recruiting people on the U.N. campus where we were based. So they put a stick of dynamite in the doorway of their building and it caused a minor explosion. And when the police came, it came out in the reports that it was a CIA office. <laughs> so that was a great thing from my perspective. But then in September of 69, I was indicted along with two other guys for conspiring to blow up the CIA office. I didn't have anything to do with it. Not that I wasn't proud of it. And I was glad to know the guys who did it, but I, it wasn't me. There was a meeting that was cited in the indictment of me that said I was there at the meeting, but it wasn't me, it was another guy. It was a mistaken identity. I know that sounds crazy, but I was indicted under this mistaken identity. I was already in prison for two joints of marijuana, and I didn't have to 10 year sentence in Michigan. This is a federal case. So the other two guys were Lawrence Pun Plamondon, my partner in the White Panther Party, and a guy named Jack Forrest, who was in the Detroit White Panther Party. And Pun was actually charged with being the bomber. David. Valor was a guy in Detroit called President Dave because in 68 he ran for president as a hippie in the LSD ticket. <laughs> and he got busted for weed. And he was the guy who had a little gang of people who were blowing up shit all over Detroit. Draft boards, school boards. You know, they were nuts. And telling him, boasting about it. Well, he got busted for that too. So he said that me, Pon, and Jack Forrest, who was his friend, had conspired to blow up the Ann Arbor CIA. Well, we were arraigned. We got the great Hugh M. Buck Davis Jr. of Detroit as our main counsel, fresh out of law school. And we had the assistance of the two great New York attorneys named William Kunstler and Leonard Weinglass. And they helped us and they fronted for it because they could get the publicity that we needed. Whenever we had a charge, we thought we'd better fight it in the newspapers and television because it was the only chance we had to get our point across to the people. So we had these guys in it. In they had just come from the Chicago 7 trial, Chicago 8. And so 
they were in the news. So this got a lot of attention to our case. And they're brilliant legal people as well. <laughs> so one of the things he did was develop a list of what they call interrogatories to ask whether the government had done this or that, whether they had obtained any, one of them was whether they obtained any evidence through wiretaps on the defendants. One of our motions, free trial motions was to disclose this. One was to dismiss the jury panel because nobody under 24 could be on the jury. And that was our constituency, it was people under 24. <laughs> so we said we couldn't possibly get a jury of our peers because they weren't allowed to be on a jury then. Anyway, I'm trying, I didn't mean to go on at such length, but this is a long story. <laughs> okay, keep going, man. So on the issue of the wiretap, our judge, the late great Damon Keith of Detroit, Federal District Court for the Eastern District of Michigan ruled that if the government had obtained any information on any of us through wiretaps, they had to disclose this. Well, the government came back and said, yeah, we have information on defendant Pomondin that we got on a wiretap, but it was on a source that we can't disclose for national security purposes. Well, it turned out that Richard M. Nixon and his Justice Department, so-called under, what was that asshole's name? Mitchell, John N. Mitchell. And his chief deputy in this uh, wiretap, national security wiretap was the guy who went on to become the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, William Rehnquist. Rehnquist devised this fucking <laughs> strategy that you could put wiretaps on people if you said that they were a menace to national security. Wow. Without any proof or without any warrants or anything. Distinct violation of the Constitution. So we raised these uh, protests and Judge Keith agreed with us. And he said, there's no such thing as a warrantless wiretap under the US Constitution. So you're gonna have to disclose this, who was it on and what did they say? He said, well, we can't do it because of national security. So he said, well, I'm gonna drop the case. So he dropped the case against us. The government appealed his decision. That was a very rare thing to do. But they were trying to get this warrantless wiretap thing established as law. This was Rehnquist's strategy. Well, our appeal went through the Court of Appeals in Cincinnati, and they denied us, and then they, they affirmed us. And so it went to the Supreme Court. Well, interesting things happened there that I need to say. One was that the Solicitor General of the United States, Erwin Griswold, refused to argue Nixon's case because it was so cockamamie. And it was so kind of, so the, the Solicitor General of the United States refused to, re, to represent the president. I thought that was the greatest. And so this idiot named Robert Mardian out of the Justice Department, he had to argue in front of the Supreme Court. We had the, leading constitutional lawyer of the left. Oh man, now my mind's gone. Bill, <laughs> I know him as Bill. Um, he represented us in the Supreme Court. He argued brilliantly. They presented a brilliant written argument. Robert Mardian argued for the president. He was a clown he bumbled his way through. The Supreme Court justice almost were laughing at the guy. They were tormenting him with questions. In the end, and Rehnquist had just been named to the Supreme Court, but he couldn't sit on my case because he had been the architect of the other side. So we won eight to nothing in the Supreme Court. Was, uh -huh. I, I was there. And I was on a Friday. 
and they ruled that there was no such thing as a warrantless wiretap, and that if the government had any of these, they were going to prosecute them. Well, they didn't announce the verdict on Friday. They didn't announce it until Monday. The speculation is that Justice Rehnquist called John Mitchell and his colleagues in the Justice Department and told them about the decision that it would be coming out on Monday. And that if they had any wiretaps out, they'd better remove them so on Monday they could say they didn't have any. And that Saturday was when they broke into the Watergate to take out the wiretaps in the National Democratic National Headquarters. So we, we, I didn't know this until 20 years later. Thank you, John. Thank you. That was a beautiful thing. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know about it for 20 years. I appreciate that shit. Because I watched him That's resign and shit. You know, I was I was a teenager. I watched that shit come down on TV, and that was some heavy shit. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Of yeah. all the different things. Well, we'd have it with this clown they got now by now, but no. Well, you're going to have to, maybe you got to get involved. No, you might know. have to step in and do I something, John. This Solicitor <laughs> General is certainly <laughs> not going to refuse it. Right now. Yeah. Uh, for the Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm a registered Democrat. Well, I thank you for sharing that story. That's why I love to get oh, it yeah. on tape. I've heard it. I've heard it verbally. But I didn't know if we had it on tape anywhere, but now we do. Right. And yeah. a long story. Send me a copy so I can put it in my archives. Oh, Beautiful. I'm going to take this show. I'll cut it up just to have that story. I've I, already done I, one. I could, you know, I brag about my role in the marijuana, overturning the marijuana laws, but. I never bragged about this because it was a ancillary issue. It's very cool. Though. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah, I'd brag about that right now, but I, I didn't really have anything to do with it. But I was part was of the evil. Show. Yeah, he was an evil, evil Your man. Your case was the president. Oh man, he was, uh, I mean, president. yeah. <laughs> and it, when you start well, talking about was, the, the, the the Supreme Court Chief Justice, that was the beginning of the end for the Supreme Court. Which yeah. now they're, they're trying to shred it completely. Yeah. Right. I know. It's fucked up. It's really uh, messed up. Yeah, great deal. When was your birthday, John? And, and how many years young are you? It was Friday, October 2nd. I'm 79 years old. 79, 79 trombones. You could That's still great. say I'm in 70 ish. Yeah, you're, you outlive Nixon. Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's right. Well, rest in peace. But yeah, fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> right. So uh, no, I. I, I you're waiting for President Trump that is with open arms right now. Right. Uh huh. They got all right. the flashlight on, waiting for him. <laughs> now, John, you uh, you do books and you do uh, events and things like that too. Do you have anything coming up where we might be able to hear you? You know. Well, perform? you know, tonight. Well, it's just starting tonight, but tomorrow through Saturday they're running the. Times through the colors on TV. Mm -hmm. I was in there with Don Woods. And yeah. uh, if I don't get cut because of the nature of my contribution. <laughs> what did you do? I did my piece on the Motor City's burning about the riots of 1960. Okay, so they don't like that? Why wouldn't everybody loves that? Well, it ends with the statement, you know, there's nothing to look forward to. Why not just burn the motherfucker down? Her down, right, <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Everybody loves that. Come on. I know, okay but who knows? This is national TV. Yeah. Yeah. And Detroit I Public. We'll TV. see. <laughs> I got a small. It's a John Lee Hooker tribute to Don Was part, and I got a small number that's a tribute. Well, hopefully, hopefully they didn't watch it too closely. Who's ever producing it, and they just slide it right through. Oh, sure, we'll see that. That'd be awesome. I'm gonna watch Fantastic. to see for real. <laughs> it's a great. It'll be a great show. A lot of great people. On. Right. I'm with Harmonica, Sean, Tina. You know, John. Earlier, we were asking everyone uh, about coronavirus, and now that the Supreme Court's overturned the mandate for uh, a certain I'm mask so wearing and bar clothes, uh, I'm so pissed about it too. Uh, are you going to on another planet? I know it's crazy. They're unbelievable. You can't make this shit up. I mean, this is you like some kind of crazy, crazy, bizarre crazy. nightmare. You can't make this up. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm glad that you got out of your that place you're in for post uh, surgery recovery. That was scary as hell, John. Yeah, that, that rehab place. I'm, I'm amazed at how I took it. 
Yeah. I can't believe that you made it out of there, seriously, it's because it's they locked the place down, like, right as your ass went out the door, well, they yeah, locked it down. Well, yeah, see? Yeah. They said the yeah. hospital went to hell after I left. Wow. Yeah, I'm this sure it did. My home where I did my rehab really went to hell. And the people, the nurses and shit got sick. And well, yeah, they, they were like working all different facilities. They would work like three or four because, I mean, they don't pay them much. So these people are working two and a half, three yeah, jobs, oh my God. spreading shit around. Nobody's greater than nurses. They're the greatest in my They're the greatest in the world. And and, and people the working, not getting, they're not getting paid enough. They don't know you Bullshit. and they take care of you in your most intimate ugliness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's they true. Without, shit up, you know. Without judgment <laughs> and without anything else it? because... Yep, they, yeah. they, they, they. I couldn't do it. No. Beautiful yep. people. Man. Yeah, don't bring your sick ass over here because I'm not going to it. Right now, I'm in Harvard. I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm in residence at the Center for the Study of World Religion. Ah, tell us about and it. Dr. J.C. Greer has just been hired here and he brought me in to, to be in residence for three weeks. Very yeah. cool. I'm here in Harvard right now on the fucking campus. Wow. Does it feel like so so I weird? I haven't been anywhere in uh, quite a long time. In February, I was going to go to Holland for the first time in three years. And I went to the airport and I didn't feel quite right and I turned around and went home. And then I had a heart attack. And then I had open oh. heart surgery. <laughs> but I didn't, I was saying, I didn't really, I just took it in stride, I guess. It wasn't frightening. I was just, I knew my dad, I got the greatest doctor at the Detroit Medical Center named Dr. Muhammad King. He takes really good care of me. He now that you're a few months in, or a problem, is, he calls me back. <laughs> hey, now, now that you're a few months uh, post-surgery, John, are you, is everything, uh, eight as far months, as that goes? Uh, eight eight months? months? Clean bill of health, yeah. Clean bill of health. I'm still weak, though. We're going to start calling you about 20 times in the last three years. So all right. I'm all beat up inside. You know? I think we're going to have to start calling you Harvard John now. You're in residence yes. on the campus. Check out the Lowell House while you're out there, obviously. I'm really you, Leonard King, you can call me Dr. Professor. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice oh. to talk to you guys. Oh, John, it was wonderful. Thank you, you for sharing great. your birthday wishes and, and, and your stories. You, yeah, you have a lot of energy today. That's wonderful. No, you look we, awesome, we, John. Yeah, I'm you look really good. I had a grueling hair trip yesterday, but I'm recovering today. Uh -huh. See, it's good It's good that you're here today and Berg is here today because you are what Berg's going to look like. Berg like hasn't spoken years. a single word. Yeah. What's going he's, on? I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Yep, that's what you, you disagree, know. right? Listen to the story. <laughs> you, you aren't gonna look like me. <laughs> right. You looked like me when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Your alter ego. Oh, wow. Man, when you get when you get back, John, we'll have to uh we'll have to have a small safe gathering. That'll be good. Hang out a little bit. I have to yeah. admit the part I had at PJs, we only had twenty five people. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, maybe out on your. Well, it's getting cold now because yeah, we can space cold. ourselves out on your your deck out there. We'll just go to the plantation. Four I mean, corners. It's, yeah. It's enough room for everybody. <laughs> okay, fellas. All back. right, man. <laughs> Thank you, John. Man, ha have a great Bye. night, man. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks, John.